People will come back to Mauritius because they uh, value uh, what we offer. Welcome to Les Rendez-vous Aikis, conversations with incredible people about the real estate industry. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Les Rendez-vous Aikis. Today, I have the pleasure to be joined by Manisha. So Manisha is an economics and market reform expert. Manisha, welcome. Thank you very much. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well, thank you. So thank you so much in advance for your time to answer all my questions. I have been very excited about this episode because I have a lot to ask. Oh, well, <laughs> let's get cracking. <laughs> yeah, so maybe first you could start by telling us a little bit more about yourself, your background, your experience. Uh, my name is Manisha Dukoni and I am an economics by formation or malformation, <laughs> uh, shall we say. Uh, I also uh, am an expert in ad public administration. Okay. So, um, therefore, uh, well, I've done my studies in India, in the US. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a graduate from Harvard okay. University. And uh, all through, I've been working mostly on African countries. So I advise governments uh, in Africa on things related to reforms, to investments. And I also advise investors that are going into the African continent okay. that are uh, setting up uh, uh, businesses in the country or uh, just trying to navigate through this whole rigmarole of issues that they have to go through in uh, in Africa. Uh, aside from that, uh, I am married, I've got a little one, and that's like quite a handful as well. Yeah, I must, <laughs> I can't imagine. So, um, how would you describe a life, a day in your life? A day in my life? Yeah, because I know maybe... <laughs> You never have the same day? <laughs> well, I never have the same day, and I have to say pre- and post-confinement. So pre-confinement, it was lots of traveling because uh, I am looking after, I have a portfolio of about 25 countries across the northern, eastern, and southern African uh, region, including the Indian Ocean. So every month, it would be at least a week that I would be out. My little one was not even three months old when I left him. Uh, so as uh, well, since February of last year, February, March of uh, 2020, I haven't been traveling at all. And I have to say that my life has changed quite a lot. <laughs> for uh, the better or? <laughs> for the better, because I have been able to translate uh, most of what I was doing uh, to work remotely okay. now which means that I have, I don't know if I have a better work-life balance, but yeah. I'm, I'm having, uh, I'm able to enjoy more and do so much more. But apart from work, one of the things that I do, I, I, I'm very engaged on, on the social front in Mauritius as well. Uh, and so I think the fact that I'm not traveling gives me also more time at that level in terms of my uh, social engagement. Wow, okay. So um, I guess being, this is personally very interesting for me. So being a woman in this, you know, very male dominant space, I would imagine, um, has it been, do you, do you feel it's more, it's harder for, for women to evolve in those spaces or how would you describe it? Well, it's definitely harder, especially in a country like Mauritius, where uh, everything is very male-oriented. Yeah. It's really difficult. And uh, I can compare with many of the countries that I work with. In Rwanda, there are women who are at high spheres, whether it is in the government yeah or in the private sector, like for instance, the equivalent of uh, the biggest bank is headed by a woman. Okay. Uh, uh, the, the investment promotion agency in Rwanda is headed by a woman. In Namibia, where they also are uh, very strong on women leadership, 
you have many women who are at the top realm of decision making and again at the at both the public uh, level and the the private sector level and uh, and there's very good decision that is being made and there's lots of things while in Mauritius we still do not have um, well we haven't had for whatever many years that we're in top positions uh, whether it is at the central bank we haven't seen women uh, heading the ministry of finance or economic development or uh, the um, equivalent of the economic development board uh, well the economic development board and the boi before right um, so I think at times it's it's time to change. We yeah. we now also have got an association of women for investment and finance. So we're hoping to push some of those uh, forward. Okay. Well, and how would you do? You have any advice for women who want to be in those fields? How can they? Um, maybe more assume better those positions or you know maybe how can they face better um, this type of environment well I first of all I have to say there's lots of very competent women uh, out there in Mauritius yeah. many of them uh, and in fact if you look at statistics there are more women who are better educated who've reached higher levels of education than men I would say the first thing is uh, they need to be well surrounded. Uh, well surrounded because um, it's important to have a, a community around, whether it is at home or uh, in the office, mm -hmm. to have mentors around, to, to support them in, in the work that they're doing. But also uh, when we're looking at women um, at home, when you have the children who are growing up, etc. It's not easy. Yeah. Some of them do rely on relatives, etc which is very good but you need to have that support system if uh, those who are married also have to make sure that uh, when they're married make sure that it's someone who's going to be understanding of uh, of these new roles or uh, that that they would need to take on and I'd say the other thing that's very important for all uh, the women education is very important yeah. Uh, you need to be able to um, well work hard but at the same time continue uh, learning don't be afraid to learn new things don't be afraid to venture into new things and don't be afraid to impose yourself even if it is uh, well we women know uh, the soft power and yeah. know how to engage uh, we need to develop more of that soft power uh, and the other thing, and I mentioned our association, there are a couple of other associations. We realized that in Mauritius, many men are more successful because they have networks mm -hmm. through different associations. Yeah. I would welcome, I think women need to be more engaged in professional associations. This is definitely going to help them move up the ladder yeah. and, and move up into uh, different areas as yeah. well. Especially I feel like in Mauritius you need to know people mm -hmm. to get things done faster or better. So yeah, definitely a very interesting point. And so changing gears now, uh, Mauritius is finally coming out of a very long lockdown. It has been very hard for a lot of us, especially small businesses. How would you describe the current economic situation? Well, the current economic situation is uh, as we come out of lockdown, and especially as the tourism sector opened. Tourism sector represents around maybe 15% of our economy when you factor in uh, the direct and all the indirect uh, elements. So 15% of our economy has been uh, not, not working paralyzed. So, even if it is going to start at a low pace uh, initially, it's going to gain momentum uh, eventually. So that's one thing that's really positive. The other thing that uh, we're seeing that, uh, that, that can bring in positivity is the fact that we had had issues with, um, with the financial services sector. 
And Mauritius now is going to, well, is, is in good uh, way to come out of the grey listing oh, yeah. uh, for uh, FATF which means that we can also come out of the blacklist of the EU. So uh, these are sequential. Um, so, so ready to welcome more investors. Ready to welcome more investors, but also um, not just direct investors, but many of them who were investing, uh, let's say, in uh, the real estate sector, etc. It's going to become easier for them once we come out of those lists. So these are, let's say, uh, two very yeah. good uh, areas and two very good things that are happening. The third thing that I think we, we need to keep in mind is that uh, in the beginning of the year, Mauritius signed two, well, actually three agreements, okay. um, um, a cooperation agreement, an economic cooperation agreement with uh, China and a SECPA, which is a, a cooperation and economic agreement uh, and, and trade partnership mm -hmm. with India. And then the AFCFTA, which is okay. the Africa free trade, uh, um, free trade uh, area which means that these are three big markets and when you look at the details i'd say the chinese uh, agreement and the agreement with africa are two very promising agreements for mauritius because we already have got lots of good foundations yeah. and we need to build on those foundations to to expand goods export to those uh, location but both of those agreement the chinese agreement and the uh, africa agreement yeah. also have got a big component on um on services as well and okay. mauritius is very good on services which means that we will as well be able to welcome uh, much more on the services front Great, because I think at the moment um, we do have a lot of um, Chinese investors uh, in Mauritius, Indian as well, and I was not really sure about uh, the African countries, uh, any investors coming from there uh, that we already have, or is it something that you think is going to be new to Mauritius? I think there's going to be much more and newer okay. that are coming in. So first of all, you're right, there are Chinese investors mm -hmm. who've come in. Many of them are coming into Mauritius uh, and um, producing here for the African continent. Okay. And I believe that there would be on the other side as well. We have um, South Africans mm -hmm. who are based out in Mauritius who have created uh, businesses here. But we also have a lot of Malagasy, okay. people from Madagascar who've come in. Um, let's say for, for people from Madagascar, Mauritius provides a lot of safety, a lot of things that um, perhaps Madagascar doesn't offer. That they can uh, you that they can find in here, and I think this axis of um, Mauritius Africa is getting reinforced. Uh, even Mauritius uh, during the time of the lockdown, actually, they had a uh, at a virtual trade fair okay. that was focused on Africa. And that virtual, through that virtual trade fair, our local manufacturers have been able to export so much more to South Africa now. Uh, and these are things that are happening. And I think the exploration, let's say, into inverted commas of the African continent is starting. But Mauritius has got good reputation in many of the things that it's doing. So quite. Uh, quite likely that this is going to expand both ways. Mauritius investing into Africa. There is a fund that the government has put in through the Mauritius Africa Fund. But at the same time, there's also going to be the other way, which is uh, African businesses coming to invest into Mauritius and, uh, um, and, and uh, vice versa. Great. And so a few weeks ago, we had the Mauritius budget and a few axes have been identified as economic boosters. Um, they mention pharmaceuticals industry, um, tourism and real estate. So I just wanted to know your opinion about those specific axes. Uh, what do you think of their potential? 
Well, I'd say um, personally, I had been discussing quite a lot about the fact that Mauritius needs to go into more modern type of manufacturing and uh, high end modern and in some way the pharmaceutical industry fits into that type of, uh, of industry. So personally for me, I think it's a good uh, thing. And, uh, and also, um, many people uh, are thinking maybe we don't have the competence, etc. But I personally know lots of Mauritians who are uh, in other countries who are working for the likes of Pfizer, yeah. of Sanofi, etc. And who didn't come back to Mauritius because there wasn't there was the no opportunity, opportunity yeah. for it. So, Perhaps by creating that, you could be creating uh, a new ecosystem where you have new people coming in. The other thing is, I think it's good to have these pioneer, I would say, type of industries that are developed. Because through that, as I mentioned, you know, like it creates the whole ecosystem. Uh, when you look at the Boston area, a lot of the pharmaceuticals are linked to uh, Harvard and MIT mm -hmm. and uh, both Harvard and MIT do research for the pharmaceuticals and there's a, there's a big symbiosis, symbiosis happen. that happens around. So quite likely that this is also going to happen once we have more and more uh, investors that are yeah. coming in. There are some sectors, uh, well, do you know Mauritius had been uh, developing the, farm, uh, the, the um, cinematographic... Uh, yes, I was actually. aware of their beginnings a long time ago. I didn't know they were still no. focused on it, which well, I think is a good thing because there are so many talents mm -hmm. and they don't have a pl platform to express themselves. Yeah. So. And, that's, that's and, and uh, uh, at the time of, uh, of, uh, of the lockdown, yeah. actually there are lots of actors and actresses and film crews that came to Mauritius yeah. mm -hmm. and that uh, were able to do the filming despite the lockdown because they were doing it in a secured location, in places that were closed, etc. So this is something that has been continuing. And of course, uh, Mauritius continues on that route towards uh, the, um, uh, the construction sector. Yeah. So um, hospitality, construction, etc. But perhaps in some way, the f the way it is going to be is different because uh, there is a new strategy that has come out uh, for land usage in Mauritius, okay. which uh, really uh, highlights that we need to develop much more um, outside of the coastal zones because the coastal zones have become too saturated, saturated yeah. with construction so outside of uh, of those zones and at the same time there are other elements that are coming up so for instance when you're looking at uh, the urban regeneration programs um, through first of all the metro that has really lifted uh, the whole area of uh, where well, right now they've launched uh, Quatre Bornes, so from Quatre Bornes to Paul Louis, there is quite a bit of upliftment and it will go up uh, to Kyopi. You have programs specifically for Paul Louis mm -hmm. because Paul Louis has got lots of, uh, uh, well, lots of charm. Yeah that needs, uh, and there's uh, development that is happening around there as well. It's interesting. And um, so the tourism is gonna pick up again after the borders are opened and uh, the borders are opening in October fully. But um, how do you think maybe that it's going to change? Maybe we're going to attract a different profile of client. Do you think it's going to be back to where we were before or it's going to eventually change? Tourism per se, I think is going to change yeah. uh, drastically because okay. uh, it's not the same uh, people who would be coming in. Uh, let's say most of our tourists have been coming from Europe. Yeah. Uh, and Europe is around 11 hours uh, flight away from uh, Mauritius, which means that someone who's going to take a flight for 11 hours 
fly to Mauritius, sit next to someone whom they don't know, who probably they're may... They're going to be more concerned. They're going to be much more concerned. And if they're coming to Mauritius, it's going to be to come for a specific reason. Or it's going to be where they find... People who are traveling are traveling to places where they can find meaning. So yeah. for instance, uh, we do have lots of uh, new tourists going into Sri Lanka, for instance. Yes. But because of all this cultural aspects of Sri Lanka, and there's that whole meaning yeah, around the cultural wild aspect, while so etc. Exactly. And Mauritius has got a lot of those uh, on that can be offered, yeah. uh, especially when we're looking in particular at the cultural aspects of Mauritius. There's a huge amount of things that can be done around the cultural aspect that probably has not been exploited uh, as well as it could have been. Therefore, I would say that whether it is hotels, but it's not just the hotel, it's the whole industry yeah. that needs to rethink itself, reshape itself and understand how to reorganize around these axes. The other axis that is important, because uh, the people who uh, are traveling or who would be traveling, a lot of them are millennials mm -hmm. who are very concerned about the environment. Yeah. And uh, being concerned about the environment is something that's important. So uh, things uh, relating to sustainability is uh, quite important. And being able to build projects where uh, hotels are able to incorporate those, mm -hmm. that's going to be important. Whether it is hotels, but also accommodations that are yeah, that well are sustainable, more green, mm -hmm. more respectful of the environment. Definitely. Yeah, and do you think we are ready to provide though this type of um, new environment, new energy? Well, I see some projects that are aiming towards those types of uh, new lodging, etc. Uh, and I think as the consciousness grows and as uh, people realize that the demand is for those type of projects, yeah. there's going to be much greener uh, projects, whether it is projects that are integrating greening in the construction, construction materials, uh, heating, uh, etc. All these are getting integrated more within uh, projects now. Okay, and what about real estate? Because we all know that uh, we have been welcom welcoming a lot of investors around the world for the past years. Uh, Mauritius has really managed to position itself as a luxury destination with such beautiful projects in all corners of the island. Do you think we can still uh, attract those investors or do you think we need to rethink our strategy? Well, uh, I'd say one of the big uh, selling points of Mauritius and one of the things that a lot of people look at is uh, the golfing. Yeah. And uh, People will come back to Mauritius because they uh, value uh, what we offer in terms of golf, golf courses and the golfing experience yeah. that um, can be offered here. So this is one and that's not going to go away. These are people who maybe used to come or who would come or who travel around the world for golfing would be coming back. Uh, apart from that, there are perhaps new markets that are going to open yeah. up. And uh, I would say, given the fact that we have those new agreements, yeah. and those new agreements are not only about trade, it's much more than just trade. Yeah, sure. uh, it's opening up new markets for Mauritius in a big way. Uh, well, whether we want to attract um, well Chinese tourists, and there are lots of... Uh, wealthy Chinese tourists who are looking for luxury. Um, there are also, uh, well, even in India, um, uh, even in Africa, when you travel around Africa, you do realize that there's lots of people with lots of money and who'd want to come and travel and visit Mauritius. Yeah. So as you know, iKids is a luxury real estate agency. We're based in Mauritius, so we're always very concerned about the potential of luxury where we are. 
what is your opinion of, on the potential of luxury in Mauritius? Well, I would say we already have got quite a bit of good bases. Mm -hmm. One of the things is our welcome is uh, we, we have uh, what it takes to welcome uh, luxury oriented guests. We also have got uh, the facilities, meaning whether it is hotels, whether it is villas. Uh, we have those uh, accommodation to be able to welcome those. The other thing that is important is the fact that we have uh, tourism, tourists that are coming in, in particular, well, uh, for the um, golfing in yeah. Mauritius, and it's very um, luxury oriented. Now, I, I do understand that there are potentially new markets that are opening up, new type of tourists that would come in that maybe have got different requirements yeah. uh, in terms of uh, luxury. So for instance, when you're comparing, um, let's say, a, a rich, uh, high net wealth individual uh, from China uh, who's traveling, uh, compared to someone from the Middle East, uh, the the requirements, the offering, yeah, etc., have to be tailored and have to be uh, much different. So, in some way, if we are going to be uh, targeting new markets, we will also need to readjust our offering with yeah. respect to those new markets. Definitely. And uh, uh, if there are new things that are required, I'm sure. Uh, in Mauritius, whether it is the private sector or the government, they will readapt to make sure that they're yeah. able to welcome those new tourists. Yeah, they're very good at doing that, right? <laughs> so Mauritius is finally opening tomorrow. We'll be able to go to restaurants, go publicly on the beach. We'll be able to go uh, just to go golfing, for instance. It is very exciting for us. <laughs> what are you planning to do tomorrow? Well, tomorrow I'm planning to meet up with some friends that I haven't seen in quite a while. So I think it would be good because of the restrictions where we could have only 10 people. When you're a bigger group of friends, it's, of a, bit, it's a bit of a challenge. Especially in Mauritius. Special. Always more than 10. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so we're looking forward to that. The second thing is uh, I am looking forward to taking my little one and maybe some of his friends yeah. to go and have a milkshake uh, sitting in a cafe somewhere because yeah. it's an experience for Definitely. those little ones. And the third, which is one of the, uh, one of the elements that I've really missed, uh, is to be able to go in a Chinese restaurant that you know in Mauritius, uh, Chinese food is very famous, therefore go to a Chinese restaurant, have hot steaming bowl of soup yeah. or hot bun. It makes all the difference. <laughs> it does make uh, all the difference, <laughs> definitely. Well, thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for answering my questions. Thank you all for watching our episode of the Rendezvous Ikeas. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't watched our previous episodes, we'll be linking them up right there. And to stay updated with the latest happenings at Ikeas, subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much and have a good day. So, Anisha, how about we take a photo? Oh, uh, of course. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> My you. pleasure.